Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We are starting a whole new series on a really old one that we've got. This is one of our oldest games that we own. I don't even know how old it is. We'll have to look it all up. But this is an old Gottlieb Masquerade. Reminds me of the, the uh, Carpenter song. Boy, that woman could sing. Um, so yeah, we've got this old masquerade in, and it's a, it's a really interesting machine, but it needs a lot of work, so we're going to get started on it. Let's check it out. The cabinet, that thing on the side of it is what jumps out at me first. That is a switch, like a wall switch. Well, that ain't right. Um, the front here, okay, that looks pretty good. It's had the coin door painted. The lockdown bar has tape on it. I think on these, these little caps come off the end or something, so maybe there's something going on there. I don't know why they would do that. Uh, the cabinet's a little worn, but I think it'll clean up all right. Got a little bit of body work that's been done here. Might have to put a little bit of paint on to make it match the rest of it. Um, play field. Looks like it's had like uh, some kind of sticker over the middle there. There is an insert missing, it looks like. Oh man, we're taking it to another level now. I've never had one with an insert missing. There's an insert missing. It looks like it has three of the drop targets that are those kind of fan ones. The plastics actually look like they're in excellent shape. Excellent, excellent shape. The artwork um, is in excellent shape. I don't see any wear anywhere. So they're at a masquerade ball. We don't have those anymore. Now that we've uh, had the entire world shut down, we may never have them again. <laughs> don't get me started, people. Uh, but it's a four flipper game. So there's two flippers here in the middle. Some dude is dressed up like a pirate. Arr! And the woman, you know, she didn't have to dress up. She just has a fan that she puts in front of her face. That's how they used to do it, people, I think. So on the back glass, this is the same pirate dude. He's got a rose. This is like for The Bachelor. How does The Bachelor work? I've never watched it, and I don't believe I ever will, but... So there's one guy and like 20 women, and it has something to do with roses. That's all I know. Guy's got it going on, apparently. I wonder who that guy is. I might have to try out for that show. So there is the... <laughs> um, a little better. <laughs> Oh God! I'm, this video is definitely gonna get me kicked off YouTube. This guy has a Boston Blackie pencil thin mustache, right? And then in the middle of the of the back glass, there is a little there's a spot here where there's a big bunch of paint missing. It looks a lot worse than it is, people. It looks like there's a bunch of problems, but there's really just a few problems. But right here in the middle, there is this woman with a fan over her face. Let me see if I can reach around and make the thing happen. And so you get to a certain part and she goes, peek a boo <laughs> <laughs> So that's referred to as an animated back glass. So yeah, I don't even remember where we got this. At one point it was in Texas. Masquerade. Let me think. Where did where would we have gotten this? Hmm. I don't remember. Joey would remember. His uh his memory's a lot better than mine. So yeah, so we're starting off with one that's in that's been neglected obviously for a very long time. What do you think? You think we could fix this up? Is it even possible, people? Look, it doesn't even have legs. Right? 
So when you're when you're looking at these. You have to you have to see them not as what they are starting out at. You have to look for the potential, right? So I'll I'll go over with you what I see whenever I look at it, right? There are two things that are very important: the artwork on the playfield, and it's in flawless shape. I mean, it's in excellent shape. Either it was never played much, or I don't know, but there's nowhere anywhere on the playfield. Right? So there is an insert missing, but that's literally just a circle that you just pop in the hole. Right, So I could go take one off of another game if I had to, if I can't find the one that's supposed to be in there. I would imagine it's probably in the bottom of the machine, but we'll look for it. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a little insert that goes there. Right, So that's important, and the back glass is important. Now this back glass looks like it's like falling all to hell, right? but it's not too bad. The thing that gives you a problem on back glasses is skin tone. If someone's skin is messed up, whenever you repaint it, it's going to look like crap. But most of the skin tone, and it's usually on just the women, right? That's all anybody cares about. So like the woman's face is in good shape. Everything's, the skin tone is still in good shape. So like if the guy's hat, if I, re, if I repaint that white and blue, and it looks a little splotchy when the light lights up, nobody's going to care, right? Um, so, yeah, it's it's rough. Like I said, it's got this big area here that's flaking away. But, that's all one color. I think that'll come out decent. Also, whenever the back glass has a ton of stuff going on like that, see how busy it is? You can paint little sections back in and people don't even notice it because there's a there's hundred little things on there, right? So, if, if ten of them have been repainted, people aren't even going to be able to tell. So I don't think it's any problem at all. It'll be some work, but we'll be able to make that look very, very presentable, in my opinion. So that's really all that matters. So the play field and the back glass. There's, there's nothing really missing from it that I can tell. Um, the body's a little beat up, needs a little work. That power switch thing, yeah, that's ugly and everything, but we can fix that. We'll make that a little better. Um, so yeah, that's what we're starting with. So let me open it up and let's see what's in the tomb. So this is like them when they found King Tut, right? Nobody had been in there for thousands of years. Nobody's been in here for tens of years. Okay, folks, we have got, <laughs> yeah, we got some issues. So, that looks awfully wet. I mean, it's not wet now, but it was wet at one point. The apron just came right off when I lifted it up because it didn't have any of the screws in it. The score motor, it doesn't go like that, people. It doesn't go like that. It's a little more like that, but I'll mess with it here in a minute. I want y'all to remember how this started when we get to where it's finished. The wiring has been, what, the reason you're seeing so many wires is because it's been unwrapped. Just like they would unwrap a mummy. Hmm. If I wouldn't make so many damn Egypt jokes, this probably wouldn't have happened. Basically, these are in a loom, usually. And they're, uh, they have this kind of, uh, like this, oh, here's some steel. Okay. So see how they have that little string? It's like a wax string. And so it goes down and it wraps around, and then it goes down a little more and it wraps around, and it goes down and it wraps more, and it goes down a little more and it wraps it around. And so it keeps everything all nice and neat. But somebody has went through and removed pretty much every freaking one of them. Which is fine, because you could zip tie it back, probably, but it's... 
it's made it kind of a mess where there's wires everywhere. Look at that crap. Um, here, you can see on the play field it's still loomed up. So that's how it should be. Makes it just a lot neater. But for whatever reason they unwrapped it. They probably were chasing a short or something. The thing I don't like is it looks like there may be some wires that were added. I see some extra looking stuff in there, people. I don't know about all that. Like, these, these ones here are not cloth covered. So they may be newer. But sometimes they had them like that in machines like if they went through and added a bunch of crap I'm not going to be happy about that I don't think well we might be all right people it probably just looks worse than it is because they unwrapped all the loom okay so this thing's been through it right they put it through the ringer I see more crap back there in the back we'll get to it uh look Now, why is stuff like that like that? It's because whenever these are taken apart, a lot of times they're transported on their back, so they were standing up, like this one. And that's how you're supposed to move them, but you're not supposed to do it whenever there's a bunch of crap just floating around inside of it. We've got some lamp sockets that look corroded. And see how this rust up here on the, uh, the um, trough? This, this kind of looks like water damage to me, man. Like that it's been wet. You've got the um, wrapper missing from this. Yeah, see, it, it, we've got rust here, so this isn't moving freely. The ball release. And then the pinballs are in there, but they look kind of rusty to me, too. All right, so we're definitely... Uh, Starting uh, behind the eight ball here, but it I think it's going to be just fine. It's not all that bad I'm a very optimistic person people Now if you're seeing this video, let me tell you a little secret about me. I Have filmed videos before of stuff that didn't work out. So like trying to fix a board And I never ever got it fixed And so it's still sitting on the desk back there or sometimes you'll see a video and it's the beginning of it looks like it was shot, and then at one time, and then the rest of it looks like it was shot three or four months later. Mm-hmm. So if you're watching this video, I've already fixed this machine. I wouldn't upload the video if I wasn't able to fix it. <laughs> you would never even know that this machine exists if I'm unable to fix it. But I don't think I'll have any problems. It looks a lot worse. This is the type of stuff that people will run from, but it's really not all that bad. So you just need to go through it systematically like we always do, and we'll get it. And the other thing, too, about EMs is usually you don't have to buy a bunch of stuff. You just have to fix a bunch of stuff, or you have to clean a bunch of stuff. Um, I hate seeing, look, it's like a, here's a wire just sticking up in the middle of the, I mean, look at this crap. Why in the hell would they unwrap that? They must have had something shorted. I hope they found it. If it's still shorted, I guess I get to find it. <laughs> <laughs> one of our neighbors. What's up, man? Guy was outside. Um, so I hope they found the short. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll pull it out and let's look in the back box and see how that looks. All right, I'll turn the brightness way up so you can see it. Um, this is a lot better looking, but it has the same infliction. I wonder if rats liked the taste of it and went through and ate it all or something. That might be what's going on. But you can see like this is still wrapped up. So they had a, they did like a, there's like a, uh, it's a wax covered string. And it, I'm trying to find where it links between them so you can see. It's, it's a, so they wrap it around. And then a string runs from here to here, and then they wrap it around again. They run a little farther, wrap it around again. And that's how they did it. So they're all done like that. But if you look, you see little stuff like this. All right. So that could be a wear thing, because it's right here at the back. 
or that could be a rat thing. Look, here's another one. So you gotta look at stuff like that. And then another thing, this has been stored with the back door off. So what happens when they do that is the light over the years, just ambient light, fades all of the wire colors to where they all kind of get a similar dusty look to them. So, see how those all look about the same? I see a green and an orange in there, and then I see seven of them that look like they're the same color. They're not. If you get really close, each one of those is a different color. And so whenever you're tracking down problems, it just, it, it's an issue. So sometimes down in like the part that's inside of it, you can see them a little better because the light didn't hit it. You see all the different colors? Tons of different things. And so on the schematics, it'll show you uh, what it should be. And so this one's brown and red. This one would be gray and red. This one will be brown and black, orange and black, blue and black, green and black, white and red. You know, and it just... So all of those same colors are up here. You just can't tell them apart anymore because they're all faded. So that makes it more challenging, but... Usually we can figure it out. And then, see over here we've got some more stuff. Bare wire. This is the stuff I'm talking about that ties it together. Right. Bare wire. Bare wire. Got a little bit of work on this one, people. But I think we can do it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the play field out, and we can uh, get a better look of what's inside. Let me pull out whatever I find in there, and we'll see what has survived the trip. Here's all the little goodies I found down in it. Most of them uh, are insignificant. So these were some of the... This, these mount in the corner, and that's what the leg bolts thread into inside. I have no clue what that is. <laughs> but we might end up needing it. I better save that. This is a piece of the cabinet from somewhere. Another little chalk block. The old instruction card. An old thing that said masquerade. Maybe that went here. And then the old motor cord. Okay, now after looking at it a little bit, people, I don't think an operator unwrapped that. I think, like I mentioned earlier, I think a rat ate all of that. They must have liked the way it tasted. And so instead of eating the wires or the covering, the cloth covering on the wires, they ate that wax covered string that held everything together. And by working through it, they uh, ate pretty much all of it which unwrapped all of the wires. Crazy. So what I've done is I've cleaned it up with a vacuum. The bottom's been replaced at some point. And I pulled the board up out of it, which isn't that hard usually. On this one, you also have to take the, uh, the little tilt board off that goes over there. But we got it up on top of it where we can get, it, get to it a little bit better. And what I'm gonna do is when I go through and clean it, as I clean each relay, I'm going to just check the wires going to the switches, right? And check back a little bit and see if any of them look bare or messed up. And if they are, I'll fix it, put some tape on it or something. Uh, and then I'll, I'll cover that with a zip tie. And I'll start zip tying them back together as I go through it. And I'll check each, uh, I'll check each wire and just look for any kind of shorts that I see. I don't really see all that much of the wire that's damaged. So I think literally that there was probably a rat in it eating <laughs> just the loom off of it. And the reason that I think it was a rat is because you can find stuff like this on the paper. Like see how the edges of it are nibbled and stuff. I think a rat probably did that. And then the other stuff that I found in it. So I think that's what happened. I think a rat ate through it.
Now, some of this that's damaged, I think that may actually be physical damage, because if you look, it's like right at the edge. It's everywhere that the thing stuck out. So, I don't know. Or it could be the rat started eating that, too, but... I think I think there was a rat in it that, or a mouse that didn't want to eat any wire and just ate all of the uh, the wrapping. See, I mean, it looks like it's been chewed on, and then it's all gone. <laughs> but the end piece is still here. Oh, look, this one's broke. That ain't fun. I think that's. It's a nice clean break though, so it's probably still usable like it is, but you can replace those two if you have to, but it's, they don't make them new anymore. You have to use them one off of another machine. Uh, besides, yeah, so I think I'll work through it and just slowly clean them. So like on this, whenever I do the score motor, I'll clean these and then I'll check all this and everything's cool, I'll put a zip tie back there and then we'll work around. And if all this is cool, I'll put a zip tie back there. And then maybe one here, and one here, and we'll just work through it and use about 200 zip ties and get it back the way it's supposed to be. What a mess. It looks a lot worse than it is, though, because, look, these are the Jones plugs. They go back this way. It goes like a this. You put it like a that. The power cord had been cut. They had wired in this line up here to a switch that they have put on the side of the cabinet. And then they had put a new power cord on it. But it's this, I don't like this kind. By the way, on these EMs, they don't have a ground. I've seen people put a ground on them. You're just wasting your time. You can't ground the whole thing. I mean, to, you'd need to run a ground wire to so much metal. It's just a big waste of time. Yeah, you could do it, but the way they were made, they were made, they were designed without a ground. So I just, we're going to put a plain two-wire cord, not unlike the original one, back in it, and that's going to be that. And that'll work just fine. Um, so people do this all the time. They'll put a ground plug on it. And then they'll run the ground line. And they'll bring it in and they'll like tie it to that. Like you're not doing it. Like that's not grounding anything. <laughs> you successfully grounded the case of the transformer. That's not. It's not grounded people. It's not properly grounded. This was before things were properly grounded. Okay so uh, we'll. Uh, I'll start cleaning, and I guess I'm ready to do this freaking, uh, this bottom board here. So I'll start cleaning through. What I'm basically doing is I'm going to go through and just see if the, I'm, I'm looking for damage, things that need to be replaced, and I'm looking for uh, switches. I'm cleaning switches, and I'm looking for uh, things that are misadjusted. So, you know, whenever this goes around, which way does it go? Where are we going that way? Whenever this particular one goes around on the score motor, when it hits, it should open that one switch. Now, how do I know that it should open that switch? It's because that switch is closed right now. So whenever this is actuated, it should reverse whatever's going on. So that one's closed, it should open. This one's open, it should close. This one's open, it should close. All right? So as it turns through, pushes on that. It has opened the first switch, closed the second one, and closed the third one. So the trick to understanding how these work is it's real simple. You just need them to reverse. So if it's closed, it should open. If it's open, it should close. If you get one that's closed, and whenever you turn it, it stays closed, something's wrong. And you can tell by looking at the switch, when should it be open? Because one of those two times, it should be open. And so... Um, it's, it's really just as simple as that. So you go through and you just look at each one and see if it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. This one, the brake's not even broke on it. <laughs> Usually that little brake is broke. 
Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to start cleaning through them and tidying, tidying it up. Um, and we'll see how far we can get on it, what we can make it look like. All oh, right, so I've started doing the wire loom. Look at this. Check that out. Isn't that nice? I have yet to find a bare wire on this bottom part. I'm sure I'll find a thousand now that I mentioned it. I've been working on my truck. <laughs> I'm sure I'll find a thousand now that I mentioned it, but uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. So I've done the, the pigtail and up to here. I cleaned all of these switches. Everything was cool. There were two of them that were touching and it. They, they were always touching, so it was messed up. There's two of the wing nuts are missing. So that one's on and that one's on, but there should be another one here and another one here. So I need to track those down. Um, just looking at it, I'm more and more convinced that a rat just ate all of the, the wax. Uh, uh, I think they call it lacing, wax lacing. Um, so I'm just going through and looking and see if, I, if the wires are messed up. And if they're not, I go a little bit and I zip tie them back and clean as I go. So I just started on the score motor part. Look how neat. Look at that. Look at that. And now we're down to here. We'll put one here. And then we'll go back over to here and put one here. <laughs> it's no problem, people. It's easy peasy. We're going to make it work like uh, brand new again. So remember how it was before? It's already getting better. Look at that. No problems. I'll keep working through it. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. It probably took all together cleaning everything, um, doing all of the zip ties, uh, cleaning all of the relays. Probably took about counting yesterday. We've probably been working on it about five hours. But it's real neat now. I looked at a picture online on uh, the Internet Pinball Database of someone else's masquerade. And the, the loom went like this. So it it goes along the top. I thought maybe it was supposed to be down on the bottom, but no, it runs along the top just like that. And then uh, I zip tied these first ones, but they were on the original and they were actually all loose like this, where the wires are just loosey goosey. And it's so you can pull the thing out and mess with it and then put it back, you know. So I took each one loose with the little clip, cleaned the switches. Made sure they closed and opened like they should. I found about six switches that were smashed where they were doing stuff they shouldn't have done. So this thing has, it probably hasn't worked in a very long time. It looks like people have been storing stuff in it, you know, like parts and things. And so it's, it's uh, whenever you do that on an on a EM, sometimes what will happen is like a switch that's on the end of something will get bent down or open. You know, it's, it would be really easy Let's see this relay here. I'm gonna push it in from this, which isn't really the best way to do it, but it would be really easy. See how that top switch is a make or break? If that gets bent just slightly, that's not gonna work right anymore, you know? So it would be real easy to get them out of whack just from pushing a piece of, like a like the manual up inside of it or something. Um, but yeah, I think it cleaned up pretty good. Once I got all the wires out of the way, it was easier to use the vacuum to get more of the stuff. So I did that. So the only things I ran into were there were switches that needed to be adjusted. So I adjusted that. Uh, the clips are missing off of the motor here that hold it on the stand. But I've got some of those, so I'm going to put those on there. Two wing nuts missing that I mentioned. There was a wire here that it came loose, so I resoldered it. And then... Uh, that power cord that had been cut. So I've got another one just exactly like it. That's longer though. <laughs> and soldered it back exactly where it was. It's leading out of the back of the machine and waiting on a new end. So all that to say, I think we're ready to put it back down in it. And I got just one question for you or two questions for you. Have you cleaned the play field? Have you replaced burned out bulbs? Now if the operators would have just 
read that when they opened the door, this thing would probably be in a lot better shape, right? Actually, the play field is nice, so I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, the the uh, wing nuts I need to order. I actually don't have any of those. And the uh, the uh, you don't necessarily need them. Though. There's two on there, but it'd be better if all four were on it. And the little clips for this I have, so I'll put them on there. And then we'll slide it back down in the cabinet and see what she looks like. All right, so we slid it back down in there. Hook the bell and the knocker back up. I've got the wires out of the way for now until we get it all hooked up. Everything is cool. Looks a lot cleaner. Now, when I started the video, did you think, oh no, oh no, Ron, this one's too far gone? Oh, no, 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 you can't do this one. It's too far gone. It's not that far gone. As a matter of fact, Right now, it doesn't look any worse than they ever do whenever we get them. It, it actually looks pretty good. It looks all neat and clean. So it doesn't look problematic at all. What do you think? I was going to tell you about something that people always ask us. Oh, yeah, yeah. So here's, a, here's something that people ask us a lot. They say something to this effect. Oh, all those wires. It's just a big rat's nest. How do you know... What does what? How do you, I wouldn't even know where to start. All you gotta do is clean it. Just clean it. Get everything back how it was supposed to be. Now normally you don't have it where, like we did, where they were all over the place, but you don't need to fix every freaking thing in it. You don't need to understand all of it, you know. Now did I go through and do anything special? Not really. I didn't look at the schematics. I don't know what any of this stuff does. I mean, I kind of do because I've worked on them before, but um, they're all kind of labeled, but I didn't go, well, let me make sure the game over relays, right? Okay, that one looks all right. Oh, let me check the first ball relay. Well, I don't know. The red wire is not supposed to be on this part. It's supposed to be on this part. I didn't do any of that. With no documentation and no knowledge of it, you can just tell by looking at them, you know? So if, if, a, if a switch is smashed like this and whenever the relay pulls in, it's still smashed together, well, something's wrong. It, it should open up one way or the other, Right? So you just go through and check all that stuff. See if you see anything obvious. Now, whenever we put this back together, it'll likely have some issues, and we'll fix it with the schematics. We'll figure it out then. But it's not one of those things where, you know, I'm fixing these because I have a lot of knowledge about them or anything like that. No, no, no. It's just I'm willing to try it, right? You can do it too. So all of my videos, none of them are, are me trying to, like, show you, oh, look what I can do. Look, look how awesome uh, uh, I am at fixing these. No, no, no. My videos are, look how awesome this machine is. Boy, it'd be real cool if it worked again. Let's fix the damn thing, because we can, right? Anybody can do it. So if you, if you find one around you, fix it. Now, don't be one of those people though, that takes it all apart and then throws a bunch of stuff away and then leaves it in pieces. Don't do that. If you're gonna get one, work through it, you know? And do one at a time, that's another secret. The way you can fix, like we fixed so many of these, the way you can fix them is you can't work on 10 at a time. You know, you got to work on one at a time. So I'm working on this each day for a few hours. You know, I have other things I have to do, but I'm working on this each day for a few hours. And eventually, it'll be fixed. And whenever I'm done with it, I'll jump over and start doing this one. Or actually, the next one. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little preview. So this is the next one we're fixing. And then after that, are you ready for this? We're going to fix this kiss for a gentleman, right? And after I fix the kiss, I'm going to fix this Williams pat hand. That's my next ones. I don't know if they'll be uploaded in that order, but, but so I'm doing this. I can't jump over here and start working on the kiss, you know. I'm going to finish this one, and then whenever I finish it, I'll start on the kiss, right? So, that's that. So leave your comments below, let us know what you think so far. We're not far enough along yet that we can plug it in. It's fused and everything, and I've got the new cord on it. But if I plug it in right now, nothing's hooked up. All that would happen was this uh, score motor would probably turn around and then stop, and the hold coil might come on or something like that. 
there's really, uh, or it probably wouldn't even do that because I think it runs through some slam switches up in the back box that aren't, aren't hooked up right now. So we're not far enough along yet that we can do anything, but hopefully we made enough progress that you can see that it's, it's going to happen, people. It's just a matter of time. And I took the uh, power box out of the side of it. I have two interesting things to show you. So here's the old power box. I'm going to guess it's from the 70s. Underwriters Laboratory Inc. list. It's a Snap It. Made in the USA. But, you know, it could have been used when they put it in there, too. Who knows? Um, I've been working on a bunch of stuff lately, buildings and stuff, and you can't buy this, at least around here, this is not what you get at the box stores anymore. So I don't know how old this is, but... And then we got the plate here. It's a Leviton. I personally think this is from like the 70s, but that's just a guess. So I wanted to show you that, and what was the other thing? Oh, I have a whole little bunch of little goodies that we pulled out of it. I don't like this. I don't even know if that goes in there. Um, but a bunch of little screws and stuff. There were a few screws missing on the uh, the uh, relay bank, and I, I put them back in because they were right here, came out of the bottom. And then look at this. This little bell is broken. Wah, wah, wah. And I don't believe it will work if it's broke, will it? They don't sound right. I don't think it'll peel like it should. So I got to get a new one of those. So that's the type of thing where you say, damn, man, you're probably in trouble there. Where are you going to get a bell for a 1966 Gottlieb pinball machine? Right? That's going to be a hard part to get, right? Wrong! That's going to be an easy part to get. You can get stuff like that. Watch them be sold out now. You can get stuff like that from the Pinball Resource. So the Pinball Resource is a great place. Go check them out. PBResource.com They do not pay us to talk about them. We just talk about them because it's the damn truth. <laughs> the guy sells tons of parts for old electromechanical pinball machines. And at some point, he reproduced those. So you can buy this little bell. And it's not even that expensive. It's probably going to be 10 bucks or even less. Now, if you look at it, I don't even know where it comes from. Because it's not in the cabinet. See that one there? See how the coil is inside of it? So if you, if you were to look inside of that, you would see a place. I don't know if it's loose. No. You would see a place where the... Uh, the plunger has been hitting it, right? Now on this one, I don't think that's it. I don't see where a plunger has been hitting the inside of it, so I don't think it's like that. I think what's going on here, see all this wear? I think you see that wear right there? I think this probably hung underneath one of the stepper units in the back, and as the as it scored, it, it had a little clapper or a slapper thing that's that struck the side of it. Um, there's one back there like that now. I think that's how that one was. That must be where it came from. So there's the one bell on the bottom, and then. Let me brighten you up here. And then, still, we haven't done anything in the back box yet. See the bell here hanging underneath it? So they have a little, I don't know how well you're going to see this. Yeah, there you go. See this? As the coil pulls in, it moves that and it slaps the bell. Mm. Let me see if I can get it to do it. I don't want to cooperate, people, but you get the idea. So maybe the other one, maybe that was replaced by that one. Maybe they put a new one on it.
I don't know. That doesn't seem like there's any room for one under here. You know what? Let's look. Who is it? What the hell is that? Oh, look here. This is the uh, replay unit. It's completely ripped off the machine. So you can't see how many core, how many. <laughs> you can't see how many uh, credits are on it. It's about useless in a house though because it's on free play. So we may or may not replace it. Let's see if there's anything on the bottom of the play field that would have that. Big relay bank. A few pop bumpers. A couple flippers. Some kind of thing that spins around, roto unit, and lights up things. Um, hmm. I don't see anything that was an obvious bell, but it could be, maybe. I don't know, we'll look into it, people. I'm sure people will let me know below. <laughs> right. well, we'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah. So that's that. Okay, so uh, the uh, we got the bottom done, I think. Man, look how clean it looks. Such a stark difference. So that'll be it for tonight. Tomorrow we will start on the back box. But never fear, we will film everything for you. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Some ass, uh, some nice gentleman earlier said, you keep saying leave the comments below. Why do you specify that? The comments are only below. You should just say leave comments. So I left him a comment. Okay, so um, leave your comments below and uh, let me know what you think. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. If you would like, a lot of people have been doing this, and we appreciate it, folks. We had somebody the other day, they, uh, they bought a, uh, the, an oil change kit for their Honda. So whoever that was, I saw you out there. <laughs> right? And we had somebody else the other day that bought a Beanie Baby. So whoever that was, I saw you out there. People have been using our Amazon link that's down below. If, you, if you're going to buy something on Amazon, if you click our link before you go to Amazon, it pays us a royalty for it. Because we sent you there, right? You came straight from our video, our link, to Amazon. So, so they pay us a royalty for sending you there and advertising Amazon, uh, Amazon's products. But we don't really advertise anything in sp specific. Just click our link before you go there, and we appreciate that. A lot of people have been doing that, and it's pretty awesome. Very cool. Now, we also have a brother channel, not a sister channel, a brother channel that's called My Brother Donnie, and it's ran by My Brother Donnie, and he uh, he does a lot of crazy stuff. He roped me into working on a mobile home for him. We just finished that up, so you can go see all those videos on there now. They've all been uploaded. Uh, we're just about to start working on an old building that you may enjoy. I won't spoil any of it because I don't know when we're going to upload the videos. Uh, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, vintage trucks and repairing stuff like that. A lot of the stuff that he does, though. And a lot of farming stuff, if you're into farming. He does, he's got a small little farm that he messes around with. So go check him out. The link will be below. My brother, Donnie. I make an appearance over there from time to time. So uh, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. I think we've done pretty good. I mean, this is a rough one, folks, but it's coming right along. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something from it. And, uh... Let us know what you think. We'll see you on the next video.